to your point, Jason, uh, against a group of five team. Uh, Florida State fans only need to look back to the 2015-16 uh, Peach Bowl effort or lack thereof against Houston. Mm-hmm. And that was a team that coming off a college football playoff appearance a year before and that was going to win the Orange Bowl the next year that was a clear top 10 team in the country. And they just didn't deliver on that day. And Houston uh, really took it to them. Oh, and then that goes back to what I talked about. You could almost tell after after there was that streak from from 2012 to 2014, where Florida State arguably one of the best three year streaks of just I mean, they lost three games total and two of them were in one year. One was by one point to NC State. You lose to Florida at home in 2012, and then Oregon in the the first ever college football playoff game. But then you go in 2015, you start to see them start to play down. Yes, they're beating teams like USF. They're beating teams in the ACC, but not like they were doing before. You have that loss to a, a bad Georgia Tech team on a fluke missed field goal that gets returned in a game that they should not have even been close to losing to a Georgia Tech team that year. No offense to our people in Atlanta listening, but Florida State had no business losing to that team that year. And then, yeah, you go in and it's almost like, oh, we're disappointed to play in the Peach Bowl. And, and Houston took care of it. So, yes, on any given day, this is a Florida State team, and that's what's frustrating to a lot of the Florida State fans, a lot of my fellow fans and alumni, are you're losing to teams you have no business losing to. I'm sorry, you look at Virginia Tech last year. Virginia Tech showed their true colors as the year went on, and they needed a rescheduled game to get bowl eligible as well. You know, And you have no business losing. I'm not saying we shouldn't have lost them, but you have no business losing to them 24-3 in the opener. You know, you lose to a Miami team that you look later on, you really had no business losing to in a game like that. You know, I Syracuse is a good team. I'm not sure if they if that game's played all those times, to- you know, ten times, if Syracuse wins a majority of those times. So you don't know, and that's what's frustrating, is it's not that same you go in with that same confidence of, oh, you know, we've got this game. Every game it's like Boise State, oh Louisville, oh that's the frustrating part. Yeah, all credit to uh, Dino Babers, but I'm going to have to see that play out one more time with uh, a roster filled with uh, f- recruiting classes in the 50s. Mm. So I'm just going to have to see that play out again. But again, they they took care of the schedule, but it was a week one and they didn't beat anyone really that good. Probably NC State, the best team that they beat uh, in uh, finishing let's, second in the ACC. Let's be honest, we're all chasing Clemson right now. And and I, I know we want to think that we're still on the same. Some FSC fans want to think, we're on the same level. No, it's Clemson and everyone else right now. So we know our place. Yeah, they are the biggest favorite of any conference uh, in, in college football, and it's not even close. That would be the one shocker. There would be no shocker if Alabama got knocked off, Ohio State, Oklahoma, et cetera, because there are two other, two or three other teams that we could conceivably say, okay, they've got the talent, the ability, and the coaching staff to get it done. But versus Clemson right now, uh, to me, the ACC is down, but it's probably a temporary stay because uh, the the onus is on Florida State number one, then probably Miami number two to balance out the the power structure at the top. Well, the problem the problem is also I think that you right now have, and this is something that's beyond my pay grade and your pay grade, but the ACC should seriously think about realigning their divisions. They won't because the way you do it, whether you do it ge- ge- geographically, north and south, east, west, however, it's the North Carolina schools would end up not – it'd be weird math, and they don't want to do that because we all know the North Carolina schools are, are the, the bread and butter as far as the old school guard of the ACC. But you right now you should not have arguably the four best teams in the conference being Clemson, Syracuse, NC State, and Florida State. If you look at all the rankings – are, are traditionally like the top four, Miami sometimes gets thrown in there, should not be in the same division. So you should look at that. Like, do you, you know, do you move a Virginia over in exchange for a, an NC State? Do you, do you move some stuff just so you have more of an equal base right now? Because right now there is no equal base. You look, you know, I mean, I get that it was Pittsburgh last year, but Pittsburgh goes and plays Clemson in the ACC championship game and gets beat down. The year before, Miami gets beat down by Clemson. And it's it's the the Atlantic Division, I believe, has won all the championships since 2011. So the last eight championships have all been won by the Atlantic Division. So if the ACC wanted to get some more respectability, they need to have it where it's not just the championship game being the coronation for either Florida State or Clemson to go to the, the BCS or the playoffs. Or to rephrase it, Jason, Clemson and Florida State have won the ACC championship. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, I mean, but you look at it. I mean, I think Georgia Tech played us tight 
a couple years. Yeah. But other than that, it's been a blowout. I mean, the year Duke was finally a ranked team was good. We beat them by 38 points in the championship game. Yep. And no one's going to respect your conference if it's just one team against, you know, no one else. No question. Jason Parker helping us out on Florida State football. You can join him on Chop Chat. It's on the fan site at Network. Jason, uh, it was great to break down on Florida State football. You're welcome anytime. Absolutely. Thank you, Mark, for having me.